We are heading into week two of college football and this Saturday at seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time, the Washington State University Cougars will be hosting the Texas Tech Red Raiders for the first time in paying tribute to both of their team's legendary coach, Mike Leach. Former Washington State and Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach will be inducted into the Washington State University Hall of Fame just a year after he was inducted into the Texas Tech Hall of Fame. He led the Red Raiders to 84 victories and 10 bowl appearances from 2000 through 2009. And later on, he rebuilt Washington State University Cougar football, leading them to 55 wins over eight seasons, third most in program history. The Washington State University Cougars are coming off of a 70 to 30 win against the Portland State University Vikings. This was the first time that they scored 70 points since 1997. Yes, it was an FCS program. However, the Texas Tech Red Raiders are also coming off of an FCS matchup in week one in which they beat Albaline Christian 52 to 51 in overtime. So let's get into the Washington State University Texas Tech preview with Dylan Howe. But before we do, if you're a fan of Washington State University football, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. I am a WCU grad as of 2016, and I'll be making content all throughout the season covering the Cougs and potentially the rebuild of the Pac-12 or the Pac-2 as we head into these next couple years. And this podcast is sponsored by Black Label Supplements. They're my go-to for all things supplementation, whether it's pre-workout, post-workout. I've got the creatine in here right now. They also have some solid greens. You can check out blacklabelsupplements.com. Use code COUCHGM for 15% off your order. Black Label Supplements also has a solid NIL deal for college athletes. So if you're a college athlete and you're looking for a significant discount on your supplementation, also visit blacklabelsupplements.com and look for that NIL tab. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, Dylan, thanks for joining me on. It's going to be an interesting weekend this weekend. First off, let's start with a week one recap. Both teams, the Washington State Cougars and Texas Tech Red Raiders, they faced, they both faced FCS opponents. Washington State put up 70 points for the first time since 1997. Everyone's downplaying that because it was an FCS school. But in the same light, Texas Tech just played Albanine Christian and they won in overtime 52 to 51. So I guess first off, what are your thoughts on both of those games from week one? I mean, the FC, FCS opponents came in and, and um, you know, kind of uh, did their best. I mean, uh, you take a look at an Abilene Christian team that, you know, went for two. Uh, the only reason Texas Tech is 1-0 and right now is because they held up at the end of that game and and uh, kept Abilene Christian from, from getting that two-point conversion. And, you know, commend a team like that. You better go for two if you're in that situation. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Washington State, I don't think – many of us expected them to come out looking like that on offense. Um, John Mateer showing the dual threat capability. I mean, he was slinging the rock. I mean, he only had, I think, 15, 16 pass attempts. I've been, I think, what, 11 for 17. He looked phenomenal. And, and, and especially away Sean Parker, too, uh, the stud freshman running back. And, and you did a great video on him um, that kind of shed light uh, on that offense. So, you know, it might be uh, a, a game for the over this weekend uh, with 52 points from, from Texas Tech and, and 70 from uh, WSU. And, and you can make an argument. I mean, WSU could have probably pour, poured in 90 that day if they, <laughs> they kept in. If they kept their, the starters in. Their starters. Yeah. And I mean, it was an FCS opponent, but how many years in the past have we seen the Cougars just come out flat against a Portland State and opponents like that? And have close games or lose games like that. So for them to come out and put up the, the statement 70, um, yeah. and you know, WC went three and out their first drive and Portland state scored their first drive. So after seeing those two first drives, it's like, Oh, Oh boy, here we go. But then they, they clicked in and everything took off. We'll see how their, their defense sticks up against Texas Tech's uh, air raid. Well, it's funny too. You know, we think about, all right, these teams have to take care of these FCS schools and everybody, you know, the first game we really watched of, of college football was North Dakota state in Colorado uh, last Thursday. And that was a squeaker. And everybody saw that if you were a college football aficionado, you know, that North Dakota state is a phenomenal FCS school, always in it till the end. Um, and Dion wanted no part of that game. And then you look at what, Coach Eck of the Vandals did at Austin. I mean, Oregon, this is a $15, $20 million roster, and Idaho damn near gave it to them. So it, it's going to be interesting to, to, to see how each school, Tech and Wazoo, tail the tape. They're going to go in. There's a lot of cleanup on the defense. 
Um, so we'll see how that goes forward for them. This will be the first time that the Texas Tech Red Raiders are facing the Cougars since 1964. Um, this is the first time that Texas Tech will be traveling to, to the state of Washington since 1982. This weekend, Mike Leach is going to be inducted into the Washington State Hall of Fame. So that'll be this will be a huge weekend. You know, I got the Mike Leach WCU shirt on. Um, I wish they would have gone with some helmet, you know, with with the swords on there. But it'll be it'll be a lot of emotion this weekend. They're going to be doing the whole stripe the stri stripe the stadium thing to where it's going to be the student section and sections are going to be different colors. Yeah, a lot that's, of that's been a little bit of a, a a storm on Twitter recently. There's been a lot it? of fans that yeah have been almost kind of irked about having uh, this scheduled, but no shirts in the stands, uh, no white or crimson. So it's up to the fans uh, to oh, bring their own, own color. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. I mean, we, when we take a look at what the, the home schedule looks like this season, this is the premier game. This is it. This is the sellout. This is the game you want to get to if you're a Coug. Yeah, because after this game, you know, it's going to be the, the Alpha Cup in Seattle at Lumen Field. And then beyond that, it's going to be Mountain West teams for the foreseeable future outside of the Oregon State Beavers, which will be in Corvallis this year. So the game will have a couple former WC Cougs making the return to the Palouse. Outside linebacker Sam Carroll and then wide receiver Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly had a huge year last year for the Cougars, and now he's a super senior with the Raiders. What, what do you see from Josh Kelly, some of those other Texas Tech guys? Josh Kelly, you know, made some phenomenal touchdown grabs for us last season, carried a lot of the load with Kyle Williams last season. And, and really, in terms of NIA, where we had to, to move our money towards Kyle, we could not keep both. So that kind of gives you an idea there. But the real bell cow that Texas Tech is going to be throwing at us is, is, is going to be their running back. And Taj Brooks is fantastic. Out of 11 games last year, eight of his final 11 were 100 yards or more. And in, these, in those other three, he had 95 yards, so he was darn near 100 yards a game for the final 11 games of the season. And our rush defense did not look great against, you know, an overmatched Portland State team. So uh, Coach Dickert, luckily, he's a defensive background. So, yeah, they've got a lot to do via tape this week to, you know, there was some blown coverages um, in the secondary, and, and, and that's going to happen. You know, uh, Jamari Colson was injured. He's not going to be playing these first couple of weeks. So O'Connor, the, the, the retro freshman, has had to come on um, and learn on the fly. So it, it should be good for uh, rep-wise and, and for our depth later in the season. But you know, this is going to be a shootout game. And in, in terms of getting to the pressure, uh, quarterback pressure, both of these teams are going to want to have a bet, uh, do a better job at that in week two as opposed to week one. According to Pro Football Focus, PFF, you guys probably see them a lot on Twitter, Texas Tech had one quarterback hit, no sacks, and just 11 total pressures. And remember, this is an Abilene Christian. This is FCS school. This is not a G5 team. It's not a, a Power 4 team. This is an FCS team. They got no uh, no sacks last week. And then we run that uh, as opposed to, to WCU's stats. They had one sack, six hits, and 23 pressures last week so i think getting to the quarterback as well as the turnover margin is is really going to be you know kind of the aspects of this game yeah and dickert mentioned that they they need to be more physical especially on the line and you know getting to the quarterback stopping the the rush rush offense really interesting weekend and it's a big 12 opponent you know this is a potential maybe conference rival in the, in the future we'll have to see what happens with the Pac-12 and, and what's going on there. Yeah, going to be an interesting matchup. It's a high of 96 in Pullman. It was a really hot game last week, but that was a you know noon start time last week, so it's going to be a good thing that, that it's a 7 p.m. start. One other note is that the Texas Tech head coach, since he started coaching there, he is 3-8 and eight on the road. So on the road, not the best record so far with, with that coach. Yeah, and, and kind of uh, that's, that's a, a good um, point you bring up is there's also some coaching familiarity here uh, between the two sides. Our offensive coordinator uh, for the Cougs, Ben Arbuckle, um, actually was trained in, and, and tutored under um, the, the Texas Tech offensive coordinator at Western Kentucky. Yeah, Zach Kitley was an offensive coordinator and a quarterback coach there. At the time, Arbuckle was there. And then Joey McGuire, who's the head coach of Texas Tech, that's kind of somewhat his coaching tree. 
right there. So both offenses are eerily similar. You know, Coach Dicker was asked that earlier this week in his press conference. I mean, same call signs, same signals, same ideas. So is that going to make it an easier, you know, offense to kind of game plan for defensively? Well, you could say the same thing for Texas Tech, you know, so I don't know if we can really find a, a true edge in terms of the coaching familiarity, but, you know, it's it's that's a, a very interesting stat. You take a look at what Wisconsin had to do coming out to, to WSU. That didn't go so hot for them either. It's not going to be an easy place to play on the Palouse. And I tell you what, our student section, they better be there all four quarters and they better be there 30 minutes before the game starts because, the other aspect you broke up, uh, you know, brought up in terms of the Big 12, this is a big game for us. Go beat that Big 12 opponent and show them, hey, we deserve to be talked about. We deserve to be, a, you know, a, a power four conference. And, and this is the time to do it because two of our next three weeks after Texas Tech, you're going to have San Jose State sprinkled in between UW on the west side at Lumen. Uh, you know, it's probably going to be 70-30 UW, 60-40 UW. And then you've got San Jose State, the Friday night game sprinkled in between, and then you go at Boise State. And that, I think, in my opinion, is going to be the toughest game on, on, on our schedule this season is Boise State. So getting this win at home here, you know, gives us the ability to go into those two games. And, hey, let's not get selfish here. Let's just say we take two out of three of the Tech UW in Boise State games. And then all of a sudden, we still have a Pac-12 roster that's playing a Mountain Western Conference schedule the last seven weeks of the year, and you have the chance to maybe rattle off an 11-1, and a 12-0 and season. So I'll tell you right now, they run the table, go 12-0 and with wins over Boise State, Washington, and Texas Tech. It's going to be pretty hard to not give that school the, the G5 playoff invitation. Do you think the Boise State game will be – a tougher matchup than in the Huskies this year? We do. I'm actually going to the game. I called WSU uh, yesterday morning, trying to see if there was any more WSU ticket allotment. Sold out. So the Cougs are going to be traveling strong to Boise, but that stadium, um, as of yesterday, StubHub had 2% uh, tickets remaining. So that's going to be a sellout. That's probably going to be Boise State's best home game of the season, not taking a look at what else they might have. If anything, it's it's Fresno State or Oregon State, you know. I mean, it's it's <laughs> this is going to be their marquee game. So as well as Ashton Jainty, their running back there. I, I don't even want to think about the Cougs trying to cover that guy. Um, six touchdowns in his week one performance. So um, he might be a Heisman hopeful. He could be a guy where you look at the end of the year and you're like, wow, there's a Boise State guy uh, in New York for the Heisman ceremony. Wow. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Mike Leach and what he meant to this Washington State program in his his years here. He comes and just completely rebuilds this program, the air raid offense. The years that he had here with Luke Falk and other quarterbacks were just massive for the university. And football program. Uh, can you speak a little bit about Mike Leach and, and what he did for Washington State football? Yeah, I mean, Mike Leach, I mean, go back to, to where we were and where he was before we met right? WSU and Leach. WSU had Paul Wolf coaching. Absolute disaster. Spent the program, <laughs> program back years. Mike Leach, infamous Texas Tech head coach, had some things going on there where they ended up saying, all right, Leach, we can't, we can't keep you. So he was kind of in hibernation. He was looking for somewhere that he could put his name back on the map and it ended up being WSU. You know, first year, his only Apple Cup win, obviously under 500. But then, hey, second year, takes them, Connor Holiday to a bowl game. And then we saw the Luke Falk years. And Luke Falk turned into the Gardner Minshew 11-win season. You know, so what Mike Leach did here was remarkable. We're still seeing dividends of it. Air raid on the map. You know, and you put Washington State on the map in terms of, you know, you take a look at what has been built around campus since he started and since he's he's been gone. The Cougar football complex. We're now christening the new indoor complex this year. So in terms of, hey, we're right on par in terms of what we need for athletics, weight rooms, the 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 glitz and the glamour of that aspect. We're still trailing in NIL. We always will be. That's just the, the nature of the game. But, you know, Mike Leach 
has allowed Jake Dicker to continue to grow something here in Pullman. And it's not easy. You know, we're, we're not going to get the guys that the USC's and the UCLA's of the world are going to get, but it is nice to know that we can, we can keep the Kyle Williams is around and, you know, Hey, maybe not Cam Ward, but you know, this is, you know, I'm sure Mateer knew what, uh, the writing was on the wall. Cam Ward's not going to be here forever. This is going to be my reigns here pretty soon. So it's going to be really nice. And it's, it's, it's really funny that the scheduling logistics, uh, basically we got this game simply because Oregon and Oregon state continue their rivalry. Uh, Texas tech was supposed to, to play, I believe Oregon, uh, this season. So that's why they're on our, on our schedule. And obviously coach Leach, you saw the graphic from former Coug football player, Dallas Hoff of the pirate ship on the snake river. And each sail had a, a different logo, uh, yeah. you know, from, Leach's Oklahoma days and uh, Texas Tech days, Mississippi State. Um, so that was a fantastic thing to see. Um, and, and it should be uh, a, a great game. Tim Brando on the call, Fox, 7 p.m. for you Cougs. Tim Brando, he covered the college game day game uh, between Gardner Minshew and the Cougs and Justin Herbert and the Ducks back when game day came to Pullman. So, uh you know, there's some nostalgia here, and uh, this should be a really fun week for for Cougar football. Yeah, it'll be a fantastic matchup. Make sure to tune in. It'll be this Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time on Fox. Hope to see you there. Go Cougs, and we'll big we'll have a recap. Linsky. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Linsky's Hope as well, and uh, you know, want to want to make sure we're always talking about those those folks and and the great things that they do. Absolutely, go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs>